Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the updated list of Siege Generals. This one includes the two newest ones, which would be uh, Melisande and Gunther. And we're using a new format for the stats in this one. This one's a little bit cleaner, uh, more automated. It updates a little bit easier, so it'll be easier for y'all to use. It'll be linked to the, uh, to the spreadsheet if you want to download it and use it for yourself. I'll have that down below. And let's get into explaining how this, this specific spreadsheet works. Now, up at the top, we have all the columns. On the side, we have all the generals. The ones that are in orange, these are the free generals, the ones that you can get from the tavern. You can get them from the relic. They're pretty easy to get. The rest of these, you're going to get them from events, uh, drop money on them, something like that. They're the harder ones to get. This column right here with the base skill, uh, the letter D, that means that this general can be used on the wall. It can be used as a defensive general because they have the leading the army clause, not the leading the army to attack or marching clause. Now, with that, I say only on the wall because when you're defending buildings and battlefield, the leading clause, the uh, leading the army to attack clause and the marching clause still works there. And so really the only use for this is uh, with the defense. So keep that in mind. So this first column is the base skills. That's uh, one star, which you get right out the gate. The next column is uh, five star skills, as in five red stars once you fully ascended them. After that, we have their specialties. Then we have any stats that you get from the covenant or the skin. These stats here don't include ones that are dependent on being in a rally. These stats are only ones that are dependent upon leading the army or just being there. So specialty niche situations, like it's only active during reinforcing or something like that, they're not included in this. Next, we have their attribute stats, which uh, is the number that you get based off their level and uh, gold stars, the calculation run there. Uh, this one is based off of a level 30 general with uh, 500 cultivation. If you're worried about these numbers changing a whole lot, uh, general rule of thumb is that for about every 10 levels, you can add just about 10%, give or take a couple percent. So it's not a huge difference, but it is noticeable. And uh, last, we have the total for all of those stats combined. Now, this column right here, this is a new column that I've added. Uh, this is the increased attack column. So this is once you assign this general to your march, what is, uh, what's the benefit you're going to be to get from it? And I'll show you how to use that later in the video. The covenants and skins. These are the ones that we have a covenant or a skin for, or both for right now. In the future, we're going to get a bunch more. So that'll update this and we'll see how, how that changes it and affects it. But something I wanted to point out was that Gunther actually has pretty nice overall stats for his Covenant and Skin. So it looks like they are kind of increasing the power of the Covenant Skin with the later generals. So it's important to keep an eye out for the power creep on that to make sure that uh, older generals aren't getting outclassed by the newer ones. Or if one of the older ones gets a Covenant Skin that is powerful in the future, then that could put a, a big difference on this list. Let's look at the uh, the defensive side of it first, the total defense and the total HP. Now, why can't I click on this column? So when we sort this by defense, we're seeing that Raimundo, Gunther, Palace, Hanyadi, Melisandre, basically most of the newer generals that we're seeing up top that's to be expected, expected, sorted by hit points. Cleos, Gunder, Melisandre, Edward Teach, Hanyade, Serena, Patronus. Pretty much what you'd expect as well from that. Now for the survivability, I've done a lot of uh, testing and crunching numbers on this. I think that in most situations, the best like effective survivability number you can come across is just to add the defense and the HP, and that generally gives you a good idea of how survivable they are. There are differences with the way the defense works with different troop types, how they interact, 
the defense stat of the enemy, the attack stat of the enemy. There's a lot that goes into it. But for just general rule of thumb, if you just combine them, for the most part, you're going to get a reasonably active number for the survivability of them. Now, let's look at the increased attack, which is going to be the most important column in this whole sheet for the most part. And let's explain how it works real quick. Now, this uses a formula, that giant formula, and it's based off of these numbers, the march size, and the attack. Now, do not touch any of the numbers in here. If you touch these numbers, try to edit them. It's going to mess up the whole spreadsheet, and uh, it's not going to work. So don't touch any of these numbers. The numbers you can edit, you can edit the attributes, all these numbers. You can change these to whatever you want. It'll be fine. Just do not touch these numbers, and do not touch this number. These numbers in the yellow boxes, these are here for you to edit. This number right here, this is the attack for the base troop. So this is the basic attack for a uh, tier 11 siege. This is the base for a rally spot. This right here is the base for a K33 rally spot. The buffed number. This is the percent buff that you get on top of it for both of these. So for rally spot, you can just put whatever number you want in here. But if you want to find a specific percentage attack that you want to add to this, you're going to come to the calculator tab. So you're going to zero out all of these columns right here. If you have a 100% buff, you're going to put in a 1. If you have a 10% buff, it'll be a 0.1. If you have a 6% buff, it'll be a 0.06. If you have a 300% buff, it's going to be a uh, uh, 3. So let's say that you want to put into it uh, that you have a 1000% buff base. You can put in the number 10. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take this number and you're going to subtract this number from it. You're going to take that number and you're going to put that into here. And that's going to input and calculate the, uh, the basic 1,000% buff for this number. And that's how this calculator works. And that's how you can get the numbers you want if you want to put a specific percentage in here. Or you can put in some made-up numbers, try and guesstimate it. It doesn't really matter. What numbers you put in here, the spreadsheet's going to update regardless. Uh, this one right here, I believe it's uh, calibrated for a 1,200% buff. So... Pretty uh, mid-level stats for this calculator. And that's how this calculator works. So let's see and sort and see who the high damage dealers are. Up top we have M Mui Jing, Gunther, Hanyadi, Palace, Melisandre, Zucca, John Churchill, Septimus, all these guys. Uh, take a look at the free-to-play. Ulysses is at the top for the free-to-play, followed by Quinn C., down here. Now something else important to note for this increased attack is this doesn't consider compatibility for the March size book or the attack book. For the most part, March size book is not going to be a problem because there's very few generals that have, are not compatible with it. The attack book, however, can have a little bit of a difference, but it's not going to be a huge... they'll jump maybe one or two pieces in this ranking. So not super huge, and just for ease of access, it's not calculated into this. So when we look at the new general, Gunther, he has pretty high overall attack. Melisandre, she also has pretty decent attack as well. I think the reason that Melisandre is a little bit lower than Gunther is that she does have the defensive clause, so that does make her viable as a defensive general. Now, if you want to find the best defensive general for putting on the wall, you're not going to want to use this increased attack book because it calculates into the march size, which you don't need march size when you're on defense. All you're going to want to look at, if you're looking at that, attack, defense, and HP, and that's it. So if you wanted to put somebody on the wall as a defensive siege general, Mui Jing is going to be your best bet for offense, followed by Melisandre. And let's compare their uh, 
HP and defense as well. Uh, Melisandre has pretty decent 260 across the board, and Mui Jing has 246 and 223, so pretty comparable. Melisandre is a little bit more survivable. Mui Jing is a little bit more attack focused, so it really depends on your preference if you wanted to use one of these as a defensive general. Now let's take a look at the assistants. Now with the assistants, there's no stats in this, the uh, ascension column because assistant ascensions do not count. There's also no stats in the attributes column because they do not count for assistants. Now let's look at the increased attack. This calculator here works exactly the same as the first page. Every, all those previous rules apply. Now, sorting it by increased attack, you can see that the best assistant you can get is Gunther. So Gunther is really solid as an assistant. Moi Jing, also very solid. Hanyadi, Paulus, Raimundo, Melisandre, uh, reasonably low as an assistant, but nothing too crazy. She's behind by about an extra billion damage, so nothing too severe. If you have her instead of Gunther, no problem using her instead. They're still a good general. So takeaways from all these numbers. If you're a free-to-play player, your best bet for the main general is going to be Ulysses, hands down. The new general, Gunther, is at the moment the one of the highest damage generals available. Melisandre is respectable as a general, but not as good as Gunther. However, she does have the defensive clause, so she can be used on the wall. Uh, she's about equal to Moi Jing there, so if you already have Moi Jing and you're thinking about Galen Melisandre, I wouldn't recommend it. So they're they're about very comparable. Looking at the assistants, uh, overall for the attack, the best assistant is hands down Gunther because of his uh, highest overall increased damage, and he also has very respectable HP and defense. So he's definitely the winner in that category. If you want an assistant that can uh, have the defending clause as well, Moi Jing is your girl for that. And that's about all that we have for these generals. These videos aren't made to tell you what's the absolute best, who you should get and who not. It's to give you the stats and numbers and give you an idea of how they're going to perform. And if you want to go in-depth on a specific general, you can use these numbers yourself to compare and contrast and see if they're worth it for your specific situation. That's all I have for today, and I hope you'll have a good one.